also like they can query data from the smart contracts uh, that's like decoded uh, data and also the things like abstracted data uh, like on spell book okay let me not okay like abstracted data um, which we'll talk more about uh, later so tools that you can use uh, um, languages that you can use are like uh, sql uh, there's also graphql for querying you know there's also python so let's focus on let's take a focus on dune today um because dune is like how you get started in or rather how i got started in the data field in web3 so we have like uh in dune for dune you can find um data on evm chains uh, that's ethereum ethereum virtual machine chain solana blockchain as well bitcoin blockchain as well you can find data there so as i said earlier we use the sql language to query data on chain and on dune data is packaged into uh, really nice tables um so as you can see here like there's this table with a block time block number blah 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 so uh this is just one one of the tables uh, this is called a row table a row tables uh, as you can see um, we have row, row blockchain data there's also decoded contract calls spells community and materialized view so briefly let's go uh, through this uh, stack over here as for row row blockchain data this is data directly from the blockchain and then uh, packaged nicely into tables that fit um, so there's all these transactions you can get logs you can get traces and get blocks and creation traces and all that and then decoded tables or decoded projects are um, so we all know what smart contracts are smart contracts are like the backbone of um, the ethereum blockchain and uh, these are like um, pieces of data or pieces of code sorry pieces of code that uh, are written by developers to guide or rather to um, what's the name to to perform different functions so to say so these pieces of code have functions and they emit events they have uh, so once you call a contract uh, function in a contract uh, depending on the developers or their design or their design practices or their design specifications a contract is supposed to emit events now these events are now um, what we normally use to track data because this when these events are emitted they come with uh, data about uh, probably who called the, the, the function um, the amount maybe if it was being sent if it was uh, maybe tokens being sent or something like that transfer event is emitted um, if you are doing a swap maybe on uniswap a swap event is emitted if you're creating a pair maybe on uniswap a pair there's a pair creation event so um, we in uh, this decoded tables are the ones that uh, they are indexed and gotten from uh, events emitted by contracts so um, there's also spells as well now spells are contributions done by uh, dune wizards or dune arch wizards so to say where they take these raw tables and sometimes these decoded uh, tables they join them up uh, just like in SQL, like you can join things up, and then they come up with their own tables, specific tables for what they want to, to look at. So let's say they want to uh, check out trades on the DEXs. Maybe there are a lot of DEXs, decentralized exchanges, like things like Uniswap, SushiSwap, Ambient, blah, blah, blah. So what Arch Wizards have done is like they have. Uh, created a table out of all the contracts of these uh, uh, protocols, join them together, together with transactions and everything, and come came up with a table. Say like dex dot trades or also nft dot trades for uh, nft contracts.
contracts as well uh, we will go over through this uh, just skimming through and then there's also community this is uh, data and supplied by community members uh, community, it's possible to upload csv files into dune so maybe you have data from somewhere else that you uh, probably downloaded or probably got from somewhere else and you want to use it here on dune and create maybe a dashboard about on it together with blockchain data if that's possible then there are also materialized views uh, where we have uh, you create a query on here and the query is uh, such that it can be used somewhere else and you don't want maybe to create a spell for it so you create a query uh, with now uh, columns which forms a table and then that query can be used on another query or on another yeah or another query or something like that so that's a uh, short and sweet of that so uh, after creating a query like this let's say select all from uh, base tra transactions put a limit there after creating a query like this you can create now a chart for example this uh, individual here uh, by the name coffee uh, nifty table uh, created a uh, a query that says it wants to analyze uh, all the weekly active ads uh, wallets on the scroll uh, blockchain. So you take scroll the transactions, then take uh, uh, truncate the week the, the the block time into uh, into weeks, and then you count the number of wallets. Now from so uh, this diagram might be a bit like hard hard for you, but uh, just like fluid me because uh, this is a, like the schematic of it, like the uh, the what's it, um, the brief overview of it. Um, yeah, so we can now these charts can be used now to uh, uh, visualize the data, and then they can be now aggregated again. There are a lot of charts actually. Uh, there's this bar chart, there's uh, linear graphs. Uh, there is uh, area charts, counters as well, bubble charts and everything. So after that, you'll be able to create uh, something like this, a dashboard like this, uh, with uh, counters, uh, with um, bar charts, line charts and all that. So, um, so I'll take you through a quick walkthrough of like using the Explorer. Um, the blockchain explorers uh, together with Dune. Um, so let me uh, share another one. So we have something like, uh, let's see. Uh, just a moment. Yes, so say for example, um, can you see this screen now, right? Yeah, sure. Um, so we come here, uh, you want to create a new query, let's say. So, um, yeah, we want to check out probably, um, we want to check out uh, maybe transactions on Arbitrum. Or rather, let's check out. Um, uh, so, you guys, uh, I think you guys are familiar with uh, this protocol called Aave. Uh, it's a lending and borrowing plan protocol. Um, so, it recently deployed on uh, Scroll. So, you can try and check it out. So, Scroll is a blockchain. So, um, let's see if it has it has been decoded yet. Uh, no, not yet. Okay, let's try. Let's try Polygon. Um, yeah, Polygon, and then we have Ave and such Ave. Okay. It's not 
past term. Yes, we have Ave. Take Ave version 2 probably, or even version, yeah, version 2. So we have, this is really complicated, Ave version 3. Let's check Ave version 3. version one yes our version three so let's say we want to check out um see uh pool say pool yes yes we want to check out this is a lending and borrowing platform so we want to check out like the borrow transactions probably right so we can even say select uh maybe all from borrow this borrow event here i'm sorry uh, borrow. and maybe do a limit 100 or something uh, so this is an event called borrow event so let's let me just take you through like how you might try and check out and use like the block explorers as you can see, there is uh, this table here with a contract address, which is uh, what emitted the, the event, the borrow event. And then there is a transaction hash. Transaction hash uh, is the one that tracks, or rather, it's the tra transaction signature of a specific action on the blockchain. There's things like the event index, uh, the time at which the block, uh, the time at which the transaction happened. Uh, the block number in which the transaction was uh, included. Uh, then we have the amount here. We have the borrow rate here. We have all this here. We have on behalf of all these things here. So what you can do if you probably want to get, let's say we want to get this uh, transaction, maybe a random transaction, right? So probably copy that and uh, let's say go to, this is Polygon, Polyscan, Polygon Scan. So yeah, so we've copied that. Let's uh, paste it here and check out and see if uh, these things are similar in a way, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have this contract here. Uh, so as you can see, there's this uh, contract address interacted with. Uh, this is a contract address. You can see even the, a small. Uh, icon here and then this is a person that called the contract so we have this guy here uh, 0xea3 uh, we can copy it and come to the previous tab that we are we were on this one here and search up when you do control f you can search up and see that this is a user here. No, this is really. Didn't expect this. Let's see. Um, yes, this is much better. Let's see. But yeah, so there's this um, transaction event, this event transaction here, that's such a tab. So so when you come here, when you come to the to the block explorer, this is polygon scan. Um, you search up the uh, transaction hash, you can see it's, it's there, and also when you search up maybe the block, it tells you the block, the block is, um, let's say we search up the block number, um, there's the block number there, um, 
also such a probably the amount something like the amount you can this is like just how you just start seeing the way things uh, move on chain so you can see this one here it has been converted already but uh, it's pretty much similar in a way um, is also maybe on behalf of check out on behalf of and check out on behalf of on probably there you see this is a borrow event actually this is where i should have taken oh this is a borrow event now uh the borrow event has been emitted there's the, on behalf of address there's also uh, the reserve address. You can see there's also the reserve address. You can search up the reserve address. Here it is. Oh, sorry. The reserve address. Um, also search up um, what else? See the event index as well. Can see the event index, the, the event that we are tracking. This is four five. Sorry, yeah, this one here. Uh, this is the actual event that we are tracking. You can see the user. Um, yeah, here's the user. Um, yeah, here's the user. There are a couple of them here, but yeah, just don't. Uh, don't panic at uh, you get used to this uh, because it's, this is like the bread and butter you have to like check the block explorer so that you can uh, things that can start making sense um, yeah so that's my pretty much that's like a quick walk through of how to use uh, the explorer with you uh, I know this might have like confused you even more, but uh, yeah, so uh, try to like piece things together and apart from having like um, to go through it yourself, there are a couple of resources and opportunity, uh, resources that uh, you can use. For one, there's the Dune Discord uh, for you all have to uh, should join uh, Discord and like uh, there are the, a couple of um, um, other Dune wizards who uh, like help you um, when you have questions. Um, it's a community there, so you have you have you can ask any questions, uh, anything that's difficult there. Uh, in that Discord as well, there are like job opportunities. Uh, they have a job channel. They have bounties channel. So specifically in this bull market, actually there are a lot of protocols and companies looking out for data analysts. So it's good that uh, we all position ourselves nicely uh, to take up these jobs, to take up these uh, roles uh, when they come up. So uh, there's a quick uh, recommendation that I have for you guys. Um, in case you're not familiar with uh, SQL language, uh, I wouldn't advise you to first start learning SQL and then go to, into blockchain. Uh, I would advise you to like uh, kill two birds with one stone. Um, learn SQL using blockchain data instead of learning uh, SQL using other type of data and then coming to so it's a whole other learning curve you have to clear. So you'd rather just take up SQL as well as blockchain and how blockchain works, uh, how data moves and everything. And for the good thing is that uh, all data on the blockchain is open source. Anyone can see it, anyone can use it, anyone can, like everything is there. Everything that happens on chain is broadcasted and uh, no one can really like uh, do any, can, can change up anything. So um, I'd advise you to like, take up SQL as well as uh, the, uh, learning how the blockchain works and everything and use that SQL knowledge in the blockchain. So with that uh, short or long uh, stint, I'll uh, give the floor to Alex for any Q&A, uh, for any questions that uh, you might have, or if you feel like uh, I have not exhausted really, you can just give your comments. Yeah, so thank you.
Yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Scoffy. So I think um, uh, maybe if you can share your screen around the yeah. the, the Dune Analytics uh, dashboards, mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, take us through the, the dashboards that are trending right now. I know there's a lot of other features. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, on there. Uh, right now, I know Stacknet is, is quite... Uh, has quite some conversations happening um, around the airdrop. Uh, I don't know what dashboards people are creating around that. Yes, um, let me. Also, let us know what other use cases, um, what other use cases or interesting use cases you've seen data engineering uh, engineers uh, uh, do uh, uh, perform here on on, on Dune Analytics. Sure. Um, yes. So, can you all see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Um, so, um, the good thing with Dune is that uh, most, or even not like all, data uh, that people do uh, on here is open source, and you can take up like a dashboard, let's say, you can come up on this uh, dashboard tab and see that uh, all these things that are trending, so the fire emoji, something. Let's say you want probably to uh, see maybe um, the recent thing with like, maybe B20 ETFs probably. So come to this uh, dashboard here, B20 ETFs. Um, you can check check out uh, what it is really. You can see here, uh, like this is really clear, and you can see uh, say this track, dashboard tracks fund movements of known wallets back, back in between ETFs. So since launch, uh, four point three billion has uh, flowed into the Bitcoin ETF. Uh, that's that's. Um, um, 711k uh, Bitcoin, that's like 3.62% uh, of the current BTC supply. So uh, then you can also see like the farms that have been involved in uh, the Bitcoin ETF. We have things like Grayscale, BlackRock, Fidelity, Tetrion Shares. And then you can see the flows, the net flows. Uh, of late, uh, the Bitcoin price has been uh, rising, so you can see like the net flows are positive. For a while, they were negative here, uh, just because uh, before or just after uh, the announce uh, the announcement of the Bitcoin ETF, and then from then on, it's been up only. You can also see uh, the amount of holdings that uh, probably Grayscale has. Check out Grayscale has like uh, more than. 50% of the Bitcoin ETFs. You can also see um, that's 64.2% actually of the market share of Bitcoin ETFs. Um, assets under management, you can see the market share and everything. So um, for you to come like and see how this person probably uh, did this, um, let's say you come here and probably um, uh, check out his query. Can check out his query. Check out his query. Uh, see what he did. See so. Uh, you can see he has a um, sub query over here. Now this query. Uh, this is a materialized view I was telling you about. So they created uh, another query somewhere else, and now it just reuses it here. And so you can see, you can just go through the code actually and do it yourself along. They like cover like a split screen and do it yourself, pole pole, see how things unfold and everything like that. So, as for the use cases of uh, how people are using Dune right now, uh, like I've said, uh, traders are using it for uh, things like um, getting the market sentiment. Like a trader can come here and see, ah, oh, the Bitcoin ETF is like this. So probably I should uh, maybe approach Grayscale because they have a larger market share or maybe approach a smaller market share uh, um, 
farm, uh, probably because they might get more yields from from them because they have a smaller uh, smaller population to to um, distribute probably the income or the, like the profits to. So things like this uh, make uh, traders make informed decisions and everything. As for data analysts and engineers, they can use this information to um, check out. They can use this information on these dashboards or these queries to check out like uh, the in thing that's happening right now. You can come and check out maybe the, this uh, upcoming sentiment called ERC four four uh, analytics. So something like this. If you want to learn more about it come here and probably check out uh, what contracts they, they were tracking or something like that. Uh, let's say probably the take token counts, uh, the amount of tokens for ERC-404. So you can see uh, this person here used the ethereum.logs table. And then so you can take up probably this ethereum.logs table and um, uh, and do it yourself probably, uh, probably create a new query, uh, select dot, um, ethereum dot logs, um, and then probably search Okay, the short and sweet of this is just uh, take take your time to like look at other people's work. You can also like fork uh, this person's uh, um, query and use it on your own and curate it on your own. Actually, this is like the easiest step. By the way, you can fork it like that. Now it becomes my own. And then uh, pole pole, you can go and check out. Probably you can add something like probably transaction hash here. Um, transaction hash and probably just run this bit of code on your own um, and just run this this piece of code on your own and see how how they are tracking how they are tracking uh, what they are tracking really and run this code and get the transaction hash and then go to the uh, block explorer and see um, that's uh, how this ERC for for uh, tokens flowing or anything like that. Uh, slowly by slowly, you you get to understand the inner works of inner workings of how this uh, how contracts uh, operate and stuff like that. So you can see this uh, this over here. Uh, let's pick up a random transaction hash like that one, and then we go to uh, Etherscan. Uh, let me share this one. Share this stuff. So you can see, as for me, I hadn't seen even like uh, an ERC for for transaction. Uh, I'm also seeing it right now. So you can see this this was a swap, uh, swap, uh, swapped ETH on Uniswap, and then you can start seeing it. Uh, uh, Go through like the transactions. This this is permit event that was emitted by the ESO protocol. There's also this transfer event over here. Check out the the contract address that I emitted. This is normally the contract address that emits uh, uh, an event. Check out these transactions. You see, this is an ERC twenty transfer. This is also the transfer. There's a swap here. Now this is the main event that happened. So pretty much. Uh, you can use other, you can stand on other people's shoulders to learn more and to learn faster uh, is like what I'm trying to put up there. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, unless you have any other questions, uh, I'll be yes. open to it. Yeah. Okay. I think I have one question, then we can take questions in the chat. Okay. Um, in terms of um, you know, yeah, SQL mm -hmm. uh, mentioned that you know uh, learning SQL from outside or you know in the conventional way, 
services, uh, like you have for blockchain analytics, are two different pieces. Uh, what main differences are there? For example, one maybe that comes uh, becomes obvious is there's a lot of it's like you're coding with SQL here. So, uh, you know, it's, it's it's lines and lines of SQL uh, script. So, <laughs> what are things that stand out for you? Um, you know, what what differentiates SQL outside and SQL on blockchain? So, as for the context of Dune. Uh, Dune has its own query engine. It's called Dune SQL. Now, uh, the syntax uh, on Dune SQL is pretty much similar uh, to how most of SQL language is. But uh, the difference really comes in, it's not really a difference, but it's just, a, it's just like a nuance, because here you're dealing with blockchain data. Now, blockchain data is structured in a specific way. As for tables, yes, tables are tables. You take up columns, you, you join up columns, left joints, full joints, outer joints, uh, right joints, and all that, inner joints and everything. So as for the syntax, the syntax is similar. So what I was trying to like put out there is that uh, for those people who are not familiar to SQL, uh, it will do, do you much good to pick up SQL along with blockchain technology or blockchain uh, data. So in, with this, I mean, uh, you don't have to go learn SQL somewhere else or rather like, yeah, you can use like other tools uh, like uh, Dune Docs, you can use uh, like Geeks for Geeks, uh, all those things that, uh, yeah, you can search up things on like Google and everything so that like they tell you how to do something on SQL. But along with learning that, uh, make sure you're also doing it on blockchain data so that you can get familiar uh, get, you can get familiar with um, querying blockchain you using SQL to query blockchain data and not um, not something else because like we're here to like be, become with three uh, data analysts so it will uh, do you much good to like take up blockchain along with the SQL promoter if it's possible but if you're like good and proficient with SQL already, so it would be good if you like uh, started using now your SQL skills on blockchain. But as for the difference, there isn't much really a uh, big difference aside from like uh, Web2, Web2 SQL or Web2 data analysis is uh, like centralized and blockchain is decentralized. So there isn't really a much big difference really. So yeah, hope that answers your question. So, um, yeah. someone here, yeah, Chen. yeah, Chen. yeah. Uh, Dennis is asking. So, so Chen, it's easier when consuming Dune data on a front end working with the Dune REST API or GraphQL. So, uh, consuming Dune uh, data on a front end, yeah, Dune provides it an API by the way. Um, it's, a, it's a REST API. Uh, yeah, it's a REST API. You can check it out on the Dune Docs. Let me, yeah. Docs. Just posted it here. Yeah, so they have like a, a, a quick walkthrough of how you can uh, consume or rather like uh, have a pipeline to like stream data from Dune using an API into your front end. So yeah, uh, I'm not really sure what it uses because uh, I've never uh, consumed Dune uh, data uh, through an API, but I'm sure uh, probably it's a REST API. If I'm not wrong, sure. yeah. Thanks for that presentation. Um, just a quick one on the opportunities for guys who are looking to query. Um, well, um, and what does that look like in terms of competition and how easy is it to get a gig there um, at the jobs that are being posted? So, yeah, so, well, um, um, so what I've learned 
my short stint, uh, rather long stint, um, is that um, you need to be out there. You need to be public about what you're building. You know, you need to be public about maybe the queries you've written or the dashboards you've created. So a short channel, or rather if you want like people, interesting DMs, uh, to come through and everything is uh, what I'd advise you to do is like build publicly. So like write, uh, you can write short, succinct uh, Twitter threads uh, or maybe analysis you've done on a protocol or like uh, something that you've discovered using data on Dune. And with that now people start seeing that there's a, this analyst on Twitter here, on X here that uh, um, is really probably uh, writing good um, dashboards and everything so that's like the sh you start you even get to like uh, get invites from people through your games people come through and tell you uh, we want you to analyze that data for us so as for me actually um, uh, share, share. Uh, my first gig rather the gig that I got, I got it through a Twitter DM. Like I got a DM from like a recruiter. I was like, I will love you to dashboards. Uh, could you come uh, try and do this for us? Could you come home for us? So um, I'd advise you to like be out there, uh, preferably on Twitter and also uh, on X and write something. Oh, and also on Discord as well. And like, on Discord as well, be active there, help people out if uh, they have questions that you know how to answer and everything. So that's like the shortest route to, to it. As for cold, cold applying, and yeah, I've done that as well. I've applied a couple of jobs, data analysis jobs, but funny enough, none of them came back. But if you have something you're doing and you've shown it out there already, that's like the, the shortest path to, to getting um, Invitations, yeah. Maybe Scofi, as you wind up, you, uh, are you able to let us know currently at um, at your current posting what kind of uh, work you're doing? Uh, also, what what kind of requests uh, are these companies or individuals uh, asking from, uh, from from data engineers? Or data data? Mm. Okay, sure. So, uh, as I said earlier, I work for a company called Archive Protocol. Um, yeah, Archive Protocol. So, what what we do uh, is we uh, generate uh, profit and loss statements for liquidity providers. So, um, we have things like. Uh, uh, automat automated man uh, market makers, uh, things like uh, Uniswap, SushiSwap, uh, PancakeSwap, uh, things that you have to, there, there has to be liquidity from uh, users. Now, users uh, input liquidity into these uh, smart contracts or uh, yeah, protocols. And then now our work is to um, go there and uh, generate uh, PNL statements for uh, these liquidity providers. So, you know, for example, let me give you a scenario. There's something like, let's say, um, let's say um, you have fifty dollars uh, $50 worth of Ethereum and fifty dollars worth of USDC. Now, you want to uh, provide liquidity to uh, the USDC Ethereum pair. So you go, you place uh, your liquidity there 50 50. $50 worth of Ethereum, $50 worth of USDC. You provide liquidity to that uh, that specific pool. Now, after a while, uh, as, you, as you all know, the price of Ethereum fluctuates. So the price uh, maybe um, uh, goes to probably, um, let's say, uh, we were saying maybe one Ethereum was fifty dollars. That's what I said. One Ethereum was fifty dollars. Now, when you um, after a while now, uh, the price of one Ethereum becomes sixty dollars. Now you see 
uh, you deposited your liquidity while the price was uh, fifty dollars and fifty dollars of USDC. But now uh, the price of uh, Ethereum is sixty dollars. So that means uh, if you had remained with your your Ethereum and your USDC without providing liquidity to this pool, you would have made much more money than you depositing that liquidity at fifty dollars because the position that you that represents your the share the, the the position that represents your share on that liquidity pool still remains the same. It does not change. Understand? So it's something called impermanent loss. Now our work is to now uh, do these calculations and see now if this person has made a profit or a loss by providing liquidity to a specific pool or something like that. So yeah, pretty much um, that's what we do. And so it involves creating, uh, we create GraphQL, we use GraphQL um, APIs um, and we consume them from the graph protocol, subgraph, to like uh, um, get these user transactions, classify them if they are deposits or they are withdrawals, and then get the positions, position values of these uh, um, users, so to say. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, the bread and butter of that. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And for developers who are the uh, who make up the bigger number of our community, how how do you see them interacting or uh, Dune and the graph? Uh, developers, for most. Uh, we use the graph because of its uh, subgraph APIs for one, because that's how they get access to data. Now these people have like curated, uh, they have nice curations and then you create entities probably or let me just, let me probably share my screen so that you can see um, how it works. Um, yeah, we have something like, um, let's see. graph so developers can use the graph uh, because uh, it, the graph indexes um, index of blockchain it right from the blockchain like right from the blockchain using like RPCs so um, Dune also, you can consume it via an API because they have APIs nowadays. Um, they, uh, let me just sign in. Just a moment. Yes. Yeah, so there's this, you can see like my dashboard, there are a couple of uh, subgraphs I've created. Let's say we want to check out, uh, we want to get like maybe the, let's see, let's see, um, this pancake swap V3 probably. Now, uh, a developer can come and uh, so there are entities, GraphQL entities that have been created or the schemas. So maybe a developer can take up this uh, uh, subgraph. Now this is a subgraph API that uh, a developer can consume. Let me share this. Let me share this. A developer can consume something like that um, and check out. Uh, so you have like, I've created like uh, vaults, the wrapper contracts as well. You can come here, check out. So, uh, we have claims. These are entities, all these are entities. 
So for developers, I'm, I'm sure they understand like what are entities and everything. So the vault withdrawals, vault deposits, the holds, the claims, all that. So a developer can take up this uh, subgraph uh, API and now use it depending on uh, their specific use cases and everything. Um, as for Dune, I've not really worked with the Dune API, but I'm planning to. Uh, but I'm sure it's a REST API. I'm, uh, but it depends if you want to like make it a REST API or a graph, you can just uh, switch it up. But yeah, so that's like the bone and meat of it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Scofi. I think uh, I think we've had um, a, 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 a valuable first session. Uh, I'm sure you'll come back and we'll uh, you know, dive deeper into this wizardry, data engineering, and all that. Uh, so for now, I think uh, just share thanks for making your time. We appreciate, and uh, we look forward to exploring your no, your your subgraphs and dashboards on Dune as well. Uh, I don't know if there's more questions, Chien. Uh, not, not for me. Uh, maybe the... Yes, yes, awesome. So, Scofi, how how can people reach you? Yeah, so you can shoot me a DM on. Uh... Twitter. Um, let me just post up my just shoot me a DM on Twitter um, or Telegram. Um, yeah, so normally there most of the time. So yeah. Awesome, awesome. So thank you very much. Uh, i sure you'll have a few for reaching out. Uh, in good hands. So uh, I'd like to call the session to a close. Our next session is on Monday. Uh, we'll be going through this TACnet, uh, you know, airdrop and uh, all the discussion around that. Uh, see what people are building uh, on StackNet from the last cohort. Um, I believe we have another call end of week or the week after uh, with some other guys there will definitely let you know in the group. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Scoffy. Uh, see you guys Monday, and uh, have a good weekend. Okay, awesome. Bye-bye, guys. Awesome.